this is uh, um, another video about spoke shame, which I'm, I'm making primarily for the students on my uh, chair making course. Uh, but uh, I'm happy for you to join in if you're interested. I would warn, it's a bit long and boring, so uh, you have been warned, so no trolling, please. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get started. In the last session, we cut out the uh, crest rail, the, the, the cone that sits on the top of the, the chair, on the back legs of the chair. And it appeared like magic out of a pile of offcuts after we band on it. Um, so we use this template to mark out the uh, position of the, uh, of, of the, uh, the crest rail on our, our blank. Um, but obviously all our markings got sawn away when we cut it, so we're going to have to remark uh, the, the crest rail onto this because we sawed it oversized and we need to, need to remark it then so we can spoke shave down to it. Uh, we've got a, a reference line here. This, this mark here um, is, indicates where the centre of the dowel is. That we've, we've got dowels, uh, dowel holes on the, on the top of the crest rail where it locates onto the leg and we've marked up the position of the dowel there. So what we can do is we can locate that centre line there onto the position of the dowel line that we've got there and you also use this front face here which is the original face if you remember when we cut the comb out we had the that face at the front we marked we, that we put the template onto so that's our reference there so we can line that flat of the, the, the comb template on there get a centre line lined up and then offer it up like whoops, offer it up like that, and pencil, whoops, pencil round like that. That's not hugely accurate because we're sort of bending it into a curve, but it gives us an indication of where we're going to be spoke shaving. Uh, a lot of this work will be. Um, we're not looking for infinite accuracy here because. We are sort of working around curves and things. It's a lot of it's going to be you're going to be feeling it and, and sort of eyeing it to sort of see whether it's looking right. Uh, and some of it is going to be a matter of taste as well. You know how you deal with this little change of direction here, whether you make it a sharp corner or whether you sort of make it a gentle curve that comes around there. Anyway, if we mark the mark out, I've done one end. I'll flip it over and do the other the other end. Uh, get it marked out and then we'll get it in the vice and start spoke shaving. So what I've done is I've uh, marked up, I've used our, our plan template for the crest rail and I've marked up the position of the crest rail on the, on the plan here and I'm going to spoke shave back to those lines on, on the front and the back and once I've established that sort of section, that sort of shape there, we'll then shape the uh, the, the front elevation uh, will we'll offer the template up on for the front elevation and shape it in that way. <clears throat> so I'm going to put it in the vise. I've, I've got my marks there. I'm going to put it in the vise like that. <clears throat> and if I move this piece of wood up underneath, it stops it moving around while I'm using it. And I'm using my uh, convex profile uh, shave. I'm just working down. I've done a little bit on this already, actually. <coughs> to stop, stop getting these, sort of, you get these juddering marks, it can help to work it slightly on the guide. Also, it helps if your blade's nice and sharp, so you've got to keep your blade sharp at all times. So I'm keeping a check here to see how I'm doing, working down to the uh, the line at the edge there. I'm fairly good at the top here.
got to be a little bit careful that you don't take more from one side than the other. The problem is it's difficult to check for squareness because when you've got so many curves involved, but you've got just got to be aware. We don't want to go taking off too much on one side, you know, down here perhaps. So we end up with it narrower at the bottom than it is at the top. So I'm pretty good now there. I'm about right there. Got a few juddery marks there, but that's partly where I'm sort of starting to go go a bit up the up the grain. So if I turn it round, this direction. Whoops, oh, that's I'm going to have to do something about that. So I'm working my way down. I'm pretty much there now as well. It's worth sort of having a feel, just to feel whether there's any lumps and bumps there. Ooh. That's not looking too bad. Also sort of eye it as well. <clears throat> I'm going to try and deal with these this little faux pas here, let's see if we can get rid of that. You can scrape, um, I'll get the scraper out in the middle in a minute and show you, but um, that's not looking so bad now. Let's have a look at the other side. Right now, in the back here, we'll swap over to the, the flat bottom shave and we, we were working, previously I was working from here, but now because it's curving the other way, we're going to be working from here. Feeling to see what's what. There's a bit of a bit of a, a, a lump there. So let's see if we can get rid of that. That's better. The grain direction is happening. The changing grain direction is happening about here. So I can't do much more work at this end. But I've got a little bit more to come away here. I realised when I swapped the, tr uh, the wood round to, to, to uh, spoke shade the back at this end, you, you couldn't actually see what I was doing because half of it was outside the picture. So I've had a little bit of a reorganise uh, the, the uh, camera, so hopefully you can see a little bit better. There was a bit of an issue down here um, because you know we're coming around here, it's sort of fine doing it at the flat, the, 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 the flat bottom shave because we've got. A, a convex curve we're working on, but then we, when we hit this bit here, it's a little bit more tricky because we're then sort of we've got a little, a little, a little bit which is sort of concave, so it's quite tricky to get at. What would be good would be an in canal chisel, uh, you know, a chisel that's got a bevel on the inside, uh, a curved chisel that's got a bevel on the inside. Uh, I'm having trouble getting in there. Uh, and then we could sort of pair across like that, but uh, I haven't got one of them available at the moment, um, and I'm sure you won't have one. Uh, so we have to improvise a little bit. I don't think this uh, 
much as time to get in there either. No, oh, that's it well. Taiwanese to the rescue. There is quite a tight bit there, which I don't think any chisel will get into. Any uh, spoke chisel will get into. That's where it's worth just using a, a chisel across there, just to pair into that corner. Now you've got a bit of a choice here, you can either have a sort of a sharp change of direction here because we've got the flat bit here and sweeping down here or you can sort of blend it so it's more of a, more of a gentle change, you know, more of a, a curve than a, than a corner, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm going to go for a corner actually. But we do need to define the flat here. Um, this, the actual end of the uh, pencil, <coughs> the actual end of the top comes to here. This is just sort of extra stuff to help me hold it in the vise and all that sort of thing. It will eventually get cut away at some point. So I'm not too concerned about that being nice and smooth, but it would be nice to get this smooth. And also want it to be square with the, um, the bit at the bottom here, which we've got the dowel going into, which is where it's attached to the, the back of the chair legs. So I'm going to check that with a square eventually. But I don't want to take it out of the vise at the moment and do that. So I'm just trying to warm up that curve at the back there. Um, that will probably clean up with a bit of sandpaper eventually. That's not coming on too bad. I've got a bit of a, a, a dip there where the bandsaw is cut into it, so I need to take a little bit more. But I've got some spare. I'm still quite not quite on the line. Well, I marked it up with the template, so that's about right. I'll get, I'll get some uh, sandpaper on that later. Quite on the, on the line, of, line there, Just a bit more off there. But I say there's a change, change in grain direction there, so I'm going to have to come in from the, the other direction of it. And that's feeling pretty good. Eventually, it will just be by, by touch, really. Uh, surprising how sensitive your hands are, even my, my leathery fingers. Uh, turn that up that way, I think. So get it in the vice more easily. That's better. sort of feeling for thickness as well you can feel whether it's it's you know there's a sudden bulging in thickness it, it does get thicker towards the outside you know it's, it's thinner here than it is on the outside but you don't want to sort of run your fingers along there and suddenly feel it's a bit swollen or something got mumps or something it's like right I think 
you can see the principle of the thing. So probably I'm going to switch the camera off at this point and uh, you can join me when I come to do the shaping there. Although thinking about it, I think it might be quite useful to see how I'm shaping down to that line. I'll turn the camera around a bit. Whoops. So I've moved the camera around and hopefully you can see. Let's get rid of some of this and see what's going on. Hey, hopefully you can see the way I'm, I'm, I'm cutting down. Pair in a way. You have to have a nice sharp chisel for this. Uh, you don't want to end up with breakout coming out, coming out the back. Okay, and this 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 lot here is going to get cut away eventually. The line at the end of our top will be there so you can just throw away like that so you can see I'm, I'm about on that on, on the on the line there now just the vestiges of it showing I've just got to clean off this fluffiness here See if the Taiwanese can help. That flashing lights is a train going past outside. I'll sharpen this chisel, see if that will improve things a bit. Right, let's try it with this sharpened chisel. The reason I wanted to sharpen it was because I didn't want to be having to exert a lot of force, because if I suddenly went forward, um, because I was applying a lot of pressure because the chisel's blunt, there was a danger I was going to sort of jab into there. And the idea is, I want to avoid that so that we're just cutting where I want to cut, not accidentally cutting somewhere else. We're almost getting there now. back a bit further really. Um, it's tricky this. Because my, the change in direction on the, on the plan view, can you see that's happening there, but our change in direction on the, uh, across here is, is about there and I really want them to be the same. So I, I do actually need to come a bit further over actually. Um, I'd say it's a bit tricky. It's working quite well. And because I've got quite a sharp chisel, I've got good control. That's better. So 
Holding how sharp your tools are really. So. Whoop. Set there. Right. Too bad. A little bit uneven there. Better. Right, I'm happy with that. With sort of a bit of tidying up with sandpaper, a little more scraper in sandpaper and so on. Now is lay the template on the front elevation template, which is around here somewhere. I can lay this template on. Uh, if I line it up with the, we've got this center line, which should line up with the center for the dowel point. Um, no, I'm going to have to move the camera again. So. That's the center for me, uh, me dowel, <coughs> so I can centralize the template on there. So that's, a, that, that's the, the mark for work that we marked up previously when we offered the template up when we saw, actually sawed the, the crest rail. Now, so if I line those up, I can now mark out the line of the, the rail on here so a bit I saw it a bit close to the line here um, there we are and do the same from the other end It up. Oops. <clears throat> yeah. So I've actually got a little bit of the. Do you remember that poplar packing that we we glued on to sort of get the the right aspect for the the um, the, the rail. I've got a little bit of it left there, but most of that's going to come away when I actually do the final shaping. Just going to double check on that. <clears throat> Hopefully you won't have any of that on yours. Yeah. You'll also remember that uh, we can put the, if we use a couple of dowel points in the, I demonstrated this on the, on the last uh, session, if we put a couple of dowel points in the, in the dowel holes here, we can offer them up to mark up the position on a piece of scrap, and then we put dowels in the piece of scrap, and then we can, um, Hold the hold the uh, rail in that way. Um, and then we shape it in a similar way to what we shape the um, the other um, um, the other what's the word front and back elevation. <coughs> can also now double check that we are actually square. I mean the 
sawn surface is pretty square, especially when you think we've sawn them in two different directions, you know, through a whole pile of other wood. Yeah, we can shape this. Okay, I've realised I probably need to put the shape on the other profile, the other direction as well. So I'll put it on on here. I'm going to sort of bend it in. Like that. We should have done our templates on a slightly more flexible material, possibly. want to try and, as I said before, try and get the change of direction here to match up with the change of direction, you know, between the two different faces. We don't want to sort of have one change here and the other one offset. Too bad. That top surface isn't, isn't brilliant. Let's pair that down to the, to the template line. get into that little bit there. I'll have to use a chisel. Alright, that's not too bad. Um, I've a little bit of a bulge there which I hadn't spotted the other way. Um, I think I'll sit with that for the time being. Um, <clears throat> I'll demonstrate it and I'll probably take it out, but it's too much of a faff to sort of change everything for the camera and everything. So now we've got this profile right. I suppose we ought, <laughs> we ought to do the bottom profile. I'll do that later on. Um, it's, it's much the same as the others. Um, let's have a think about this. No, I better do it now.
I've done a bit of uh, shaping of the underneath here, sort of checking that we're the square all the time. Uh, you do have to keep this check, keep on doing this checking, and you have to be a bit careful about it because it doesn't take much to, to go out a square. Um, so I've shaped this bit here, brought this up to, to, to here, so we've got this change of direction all happening all around at the same point. Uh, what I want to show you was, was a little bit about um, shaping this sort of little um, protrusion we've got on the, the bottom here. So I'm just going to turn around so that we can work this bit here. So I, think I might try to move, move in the bang on there. Now, on the other times when we've had this change of direction, I've tried to make it sort of fairly gentle, but I think here we do actually want a very defined, you know, a crisp corner. You can have a crisp corner on such a, a gentle curve, but I'm, so I'm just going to come in, probably best come in this way actually. The other thing you need to be aware of is it needs to be central. So it's worth taking a measurement from there to there and also from there to there to ensure that, uh, you know, it, it, that this, this sort of domed bit is actually set in the centre because our back splat is going to be, you know, being jointed into that. And obviously the back splat needs to be in the middle. Uh, so this dome needs to be in the middle. So I'm just paring away like that. Try and get some nice crisp, crisp point. I mean, you could argue it is the underneath of the back crest rail, so it's not that evident, but you know, better right than not. Direction's wrong anyway, so let's keep working it like that. One problem with, with filming this is that. Um, if I was doing this without filming, I'd be sort of flip, flipping this around all the time and, and you know, coming in from one side and the other side. And, uh, but it don't really work when you're filming it. Because you'd be moving the camera around all the time. That's a bit of a pain. So that's not too bad. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is it's not, it's not totally square. Or is it? You know, it's, it's a bit angled that way, so I need to bring it around a bit. So we've got a sort of a bit of a, a corner there, crisp corner there, it's a little bit uneven there, so I might get a scraper in there to finish that off later. Right, so I'll also do that later. Well, just what I wanted to demonstrate finally on the spoke shaving side of things anyway, is that once we've got this profile sorted. We then need to sort of start introducing a curve at the profile that way, because on the on the uh, on the actual chair, the final chair, this is a rounded uh, this is rounded here, the top of this. It's a sort of a U shaped, inverted U shape, and then it goes down. And the pro slowly, the profile changes until it's more square shaped. There, we're just obviously just a bit of arousing. Uh, so it's square shaped. <laughs> I'll come out the other end. It's square shaped here. Uh, with just a little bit of arousing, then as it comes along, it, it goes into that inverted U shape. So we've got to sort of create that inverted U. I'm not sure what's the best tool for that. One. So 
probably working it more here. I'm getting tear out there, so there's the grain direction is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I work it here, that's it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm, no, that's not working either. Um, it's sort of sweeping round, so it's a little bit tricky, this. Oh, so This tool is, is easier to use in both directions than like this one. This one it's, it's sort of built going that way. Whereas this one, you can use it in either direction, I think, which is quite useful. And what you're looking for is, is um, sort of a, a continuous curve w without that flat on the top. The flat on the top will show that you haven't quite got it right, basically, <laughs> which won't look, won't look very good in the final chair, you know. Your eye is expecting a curve to go all the way around in this situation. Right? So we want to try and get that curve continuous. And you'll be able to feel if you run your fingers around again. Very tactile exercises, really. Very lightly arrows down there, but it's quite difficult to find the right green direction. You're working on the corner there, so you've got the two sets of grain, you know, the grain direction in the different dimensions to, to cater for. And, uh, I might just do that with a bit of sandpaper and a block plane. I do use sandpaper sometimes. Okay, have a go at scraping. quite unpleasant to work that bit there. It will have to be sandpaper, right? That would be cabinet scrapers were sharper.
do a bit more work on this and we'll, we'll come back to it. I'll tidy up so you can see more or less what I've, what I've done rather than what I'm doing. <laughs> I've done a bit more work, <coughs> work, more work on this, and um, so I've, I've sort of worked it more with the spoke shaves. And as I said, it's a very tactile thing. You've got to sort of really just sort of feel for where the sort of lumps and bumps are. Um, I found that that problem I had with with sort of working around on the corner here is it's partly because Ash has got quite a hard grain differential between the you know the sort of annual rings. Uh, so that doesn't help, but also it's because we're you know we're going in a curve that way. In that plane, we we, we should be going down the hill like that. But if I was doing this one here, then in this plane I should be going that way. So it does make it very tricky when you're doing a corner like that, where it's sort of divided between the two different directions. Uh, so you've just got to set it very fine and take it very carefully, and then you can then. A little bit of scraping just to even it out a bit, and then sort of blend it in with sandpaper. Like that. So as I say, what you're looking for is sort of a, a sort of a half round there, and then it blends in to sort of where you're just sort of square here, so you're just rounding over those corners like that. Trying to get those grain direct, those changes in direction, all in a similar sort of plane. Um, you will find it will be a bit tricky there. Um, I've got in as close as I could with this this one, um, and then sort of paired it again, um, and then I've sort of scraped it because you, you, you d I found that there's a little sort of lump. Just you come down here, and then there's a little lump appears there so you've got to sort of scrape away that lump there and then the final thing is sort of working with the sort of curved side of the uh, uh, you know sanding blocks usually have a sort of a square corners and some slightly more curved corners so if you work with the more curved corners and work it across like that you should be able to get a sort of good, good blending in between the flat and then just sort of rising up to the to the um, to the, the curve of the back, and then finish off going with the grain. That's starting to feel reasonable. Uh, sort of blend it in round there like that. Obviously, we'll, we'll trim off the ends at a later date. So. And then on the underneath. Um, see what I mean what I was saying about wanting to try and get a nice crisp bit at the, on this curve here you want that curve to be quite well defined so you need to keep that fairly crisp I mean everything I'm saying here is, is a matter of taste really that's how I like it I mean you might decide you want it some uh, want it different it's sort of whatever turns you on really um, but to get these this crispness here um, if you work down like that, sort of pair down, I'll do a little bit. Pair down that way, and then come in from the other side, like that. You should be able to get a nice crisp corner. Um, it shouldn't take me very much work doing on it because we don't really want to be sanding it because you'll lose crispness. I mean you could scrape down there into that corner. Whoops. So you stop on the corner then come in the other way and also stop on the corner. So you'll end up with some shavings there but then they'll come away and you should end up with nice crisp parts there. And hopefully that'll be about it. So that's sort of what it's looking like at the moment. Uh, I have forgotten. <laughs> I've still got sharp corners on the bottom here. I've got to do a bit of rounding over, you know, a bit, a bit of uh, arrowing there as well. 
Um, and I notice that that, you know, difficult to tell. I think it's a bit lopsided, this curved bit here. Right.